Welcome to what may be the second final episode of the 380 Ammo Quest. Remember, I did a final episode and then I kept testing. I kept testing because new ammo kept coming out. The one that's come out most recently, I just picked these up, Federal HST 380. Are we done now? <laughs> Am I finally done with the quest? I'll tell you what, based on reputation alone of the HST, if this had been available when I first picked up the Taurus TCP here, I may not even have gone on the ammo quest. I may have just said, hey, how can it get any better than HSTs? In my 9mm ammo quest, I got to tell you, the HSTs are pretty dominant. They're fantastic performers, deep penetrators, beautiful expansion, very consistent. They're wonderful. 380 has been very challenging to find good performing bullets. Even some of the big names like PDX-1 just underpenetrated substantially. We're getting like eight inches of penetration out of a PDX-1. The HST, now that I've done the testing that I've done, I'm, I'm not 100% sold. I'm very optimistic because the HSTs are brilliant and wonderful in the nine millimeter or other bigger calibers. In the 380 though, see the HST expands very big in the other calibers. It's known for beautiful stars. It, it makes these wonderful expanded stars. But that's kind of the enemy when you're dealing with a little 380. There's just not enough power to push a big bullet deep. You usually have to choose to go with a very little expanded bullet, like the Hornady XTP, one of the best performers that I found from the little 380, or you get very big expansion and paltry penetration. And the experts will tell you the most important factor in bullet design for self-defense purposes is to get sufficient penetration, that bare minimum of 12 inches. So the HST comes out and I'm worried because it's a 380 and typically HSTs have expanded very big. And, and there's the whole law of physics thing that we have to face that, you know, you can't violate the laws of physics. However, Federal's a pretty smart company. They make some great rounds and right on the box, right here in the corner, it says micro. It shows a little pistol, a little micro pistol. So I'm thinking they may very well have optimized this design to work properly and fulfill the role that defensive ammo needs to perform from the micro pistol. Another thing that gives me some optimism is they're heavy bullets. Generally heavy bullets, all other things being equal, a heavier bullet will usually penetrate a little further. And these are 99 grains. Most 380s are 90 grains and it's still loaded pretty hot. They claim 975 feet per second, although they don't specify what the barrel length is. Um, I don't expect we'll get 975 out of the little tiny pocket pistol. It's probably from a four inch barrel, what they tested, but that's still pretty hot. I mean, Hornady Custom, which was one of the best performers I tried, was 90 grains at 1,000 feet per second. So 99 grains at almost the same velocity, 975, means this is probably loaded pretty hot. So maybe it will have the power to do what needs to be done. Before I get started, sometimes folks ask, how do you know that your gel is accurate? The standard is to use BBs at 590 feet per second, and they're supposed to come in at about three and three eighths inches. Anywhere from the range of about 2.94 to 3.74 inches is acceptable, but the ideal calibration standard is about three and three eighths inches. These are two BBs I put into this block. You can see they're exactly where they should be. So the, the results that I got that I'm gonna show you now are profoundly disappointing extreme under penetration. I'll leave the editorial for later and just give you the numbers. We had two come in at eight, one at eight and a half, and two at eight and three quarters inches. So simply nowhere near the minimum. Through the denim, the results are better, definitely better. Shortest bullet came in at 10 and a quarter, and we also had one at 10 and a half. From there, things get pretty decent. Third bullet, 11 and a half. Fourth bullet actually made it to 12, and the fifth bullet to 12 and a quarter. Those two ended up right behind each other in the block, so it looks like one big mass, but there are two separate bullets there. Okay, looking at the bullets in the bear gel, you know, they may not have penetrated like HSTs, but boy, they sure did expand like them. Beautiful. Gorgeous, huge expansion for a 380. Absolutely huge. Of course, that's inherently the problem and why they can't penetrate. In denim, 
Uh, not so good. The three that did expand, expanded very big. And those are the ones that didn't penetrate very far. The two that penetrated further, you know, the 12 and 12 and a quarter, they made it there because they didn't actually expand. I, I don't know that I've ever seen an HST fail to expand like that. These ones did. I'm not that down on this, though, because it is a 380. To be fair, if you look at the test, even of some of the best performers I found in the Ammo Quest, when it came to the denim, sometimes we had cruddy expansion like that. And I, you know, at least these did penetrate far enough. But I'm looking at this in context, and I'm thinking, this is really no different than what I got from PDX1. Here, let's move this HST out of the way and put a PDX1 in there. Look at that. PDX1 bullet expanded gigantic and penetrated to eight and a half inches, just like the HSTs did. It's not really any different than what we got from Critical Defense. Gigantic expansion, poor penetration. What I got that expanded and did penetrate deep enough, that's a Precision 1 XTP, the Hornady XTP bullet. And it just makes sense. It doesn't expand very much, and because it stays small, it penetrates deep. So when you're looking at these going eight inches, eight and a half, and this one went 14, it makes sense as to why it could do it. And this brings us back to the eternal conundrum of a 380. Do you want expansion? Do you want penetration? Wrap up on the HST 380s. I can't recommend them. They're under penetrators. And as Martin Fackler said, over penetration may get you sued, but under penetration can get you killed. Eight inch bullet is simply not sufficient penetration to, to rely on that it will be able to cause an incapacitating hit. It just isn't. Now, I know I'm going to get complaints and people are going to write in and say your standards are too high or whatever. Here's the thing. I don't make the rules. I didn't invent these standards. These standards were established by the best experts in the world in terminal ballistics and guys who spent their entire careers pulling bullets out of bodies. Combat surgeons, trauma surgeons, ER surgeons, uh, coroners, medical examiners, forensic pathologists, people who dealt with bullets coming out of bodies every day, who knew what a bullet does to a body. They know what it takes. And they determined that in ballistic gel, a bare minimum of 12 inches is what's necessary in order for the bullet to be able to reach and destroy the vital organs from any angle and through intervening obstacles such as arms. Somebody's pointing a gun at you, their arms are blocking their chest. You need to be able to get through those arms to hit the vital organs. Eight inch bullet cannot do that. There, there are some cases where an eight inch bullet will be enough. I'm gonna give you an example. It's a horrible example, but I'm just gonna have to be graphic to explain it. If you're a mob assassin and your job is to execute somebody mob style and you put the gun to the back of their head and pull the trigger, yes, an eight inch bullet will be sufficient for that. I'm not saying that these are just gonna bounce off somebody and, and not do any damage whatsoever. That's not what we're talking about. But what I am saying is there are scenarios where eight inches is not sufficient. And one example, easily understandable example, is if you're in a scenario that is so dire that you need to resort to armed conflict to defend yourself, it may very well be a scenario where somebody is pointing a gun at you. Now look what happened here. You can't get at my chest through this. I've got my arms in, in the way, and these arms are going to involve a lot of penetration to get past. Look at that arm on an angle. That's a good five inches. Five inches of penetration power that bullet's going to have to go through before it can even get to the chest. And it's even worse than that because there's almost no way you're going to get through this arm without hitting the big bones that are in the forearm. So that'll rob you of another couple of inches. So your eight inch bullet that you're thinking, oh, that'll go right through me. It may barely even make it through the arm before it hits the chest. So you're thinking, okay, well, that's a reversionary. And if I do hit that, then his arm is going to fall down. And so then he'll be exposed. Maybe. How do you know how many bullets you're even going to hit with? You know, the NYPD when in their officer involved shootings they average one hit out of every six bullets fired well that's pretty much the entire magazine here if this is what you're defending yourself with you may only get one hit out of the entire gun that hit better count it better be able to do what it needs to do in my opinion the opinions of the experts that 12 inch minimum is there for a reason we need that to be able to count on that so why settle for an eight inch bullet there there are some eight inch bullets out there like pdx1 that was my problem with PDX-1, big under penetrator. It only goes eight inches. That's my problem with critical defense. It was only going around nine inches in my testing. Why settle for an eight inch bullet? You don't have to. There are alternatives in the 380. 
if you want to go with a uh, brand name, Hornady Custom. It's an XTP bullet. You saw in the comparison that the XTP expands very small. That's why it can go deep. These are going to go 13, 14 inches, not eight. The Precision One, if you're okay with a boutique loader, you know, if you need a brand name, Hornady Custom is great. If, if a boutique loader, if you're okay with that, these were the best performers that I did. Also XTP bullets. If you're willing to try these, the Lehigh Defense Extreme Penetrator, these will go up to 19 inches. They don't ever clog up. They can't fail to expand because they're not expanders. And they can go 19 inches from this same pistol. Up to 19. Why are we settling for eight? And if you need Federal, they still make Hydroshock. And the Hydroshock would go well over 12 inches. Now, granted, the Hydroshock was very inconsistent in its expansion. And, you know, sometimes the other XTPs were inconsistent too. It's a 380, and sometimes we make compromises. And when you're dealing with a little tiny gun like this, you can't expect service duty caliber um, expansion and penetration. But you can get bullets that will go deep enough. There's a variety of them. So I just don't see the appeal to resorting to a bullet that can't. That's my problem with the HSTs. I wish that it was different, but this is the way that it is, and that's my report. So thank you very much for watching. If you like what you saw, please hit the like button, and if you hit the subscribe button, you'll be notified the next time a video is posted.